Welcome to Working the Song with Reaper, straight ahead. Okay, so let's dig right in with something that I've been wanting to edit for quite a bit now through this series, and that is my intro. I like my intro a whole bunch, but the acoustic guitars uh, are not voicing the chord structure that I would like to hear. Uh, this is what's playing currently. That is a, I believe it's a G, A, B into that structure. So uh, I just don't like the way it's voiced. And that's, this is a case in point why I prefer to have multiple parts uh, because it certainly gives me more choices now within this this is my two acoustic guitars right here <clears throat> within these tracks I have what I want and so what I'm going to do first for this edit is I'm going to get rid of this stretch here that I don't prefer to have and I'm going to take this off of a snapping mode and I will delete that particular area there and then I will highlight uh, let's see, uh, I'll highlight that and I will cut area, selected area of selected items I will highlight that I'll delete and I will also Copy that. Come down here and come down here. And I will highlight that section. And come down here and paste it. Now, in quick shape, I believe I have what I'd like. So, let's. Take a listen. That's what I was looking for. A little better chord structure. And let's take it off of loop. Good. Let's add a little more in here just to make sure. And so there you go. That's uh, that's exactly what I was looking for. And and now to even include the uh, a little more instrumentation, let's hear it with that. <laughs> and now I have a, a fiddle going, which uh, I happen to like the way that played the intro hits there. Yeah. So. Now my intro is satisfying me, and we'll move on to uh, a little something else. Okay, here's another section that has uh, caught my attention through the uh, whole process up until now, and that is this little section going into a chorus. Uh, and take a listen, you'll only hear what I mean. I have the drums and the acoustic strum guitar track isolated, and the timing is off. hear it this is how I will deal with that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the timing and it comes down to this acoustic strum track and so this is what I will do to handle that I have the cursor placed where I want it and I will just create a split there I will create a split here and I will create a split there and what I'm gonna do is resize some of these items here uh, to make it a little better for me. Uh, 
I'll see how that plays. That first one's good. Good. The second one uh, is something that concerns me as well. I will, I will. In fact, I want to. Let's see how that goes. I like it. And I will also uh, make this a little smoother here by just moving this audio a little closer. And now, a smoother transition there. Good. Now that I have a little bit of a problem here because this audio cuts off a little short. So this is what I'm going to do to help that. First off, I'm going to enable snapping mode and I am going to get rid of that selection there. But I have an awful big space here and so this is what I'm going to do. Remember all the way down at the end of our file I had those holds specially written in for things like this. Well there's the A. If you remember all the way back in Band of the Box I wrote after the chart some holds and here's a G one that I wrote specifically That's a nice long hold. I wrote that very, very specifically because I knew what was going to happen here. So watch what I do. I'm going to delete that. And this is what I shall do. I'll go back to this hold. And I will copy that, and that is a G. Just to confirm, I will come over here, and I will paste that. Now, let's move in a little tighter. I want this, uh, we'll come off of snap mode. Yeah, we'll Very good. Very good. And and I will just get rid of that. Good. In fact I'll go on back on to snap mode. I'll snap that there. And so what I've done here. Excellent. So this is why all the way down here, those little holds that I wrote in after the chart came in and saved the day for this little part and made it sound very, very fluid. Now this little missing hole here, I'm going to replace with the work that I did here in the first intro section. And I will just copy that and paste that into here and it'll all be nicey nice. And this is how I manipulate and edit in Reaper, and it makes quick work of it. And how I will do that is just to take this audio and, mm, let's see, go into snap mode. I do like to snap this right there. And we come here, and we paste those beginning parts, and...
so, and I will save that. As we all know, saving as you go is awfully important. Uh, so there you have it, and... Uh, Very good. Excellent. So that's how I take care of two very important spots there. This is also why I'm not too particular about auto-rendered parts, auto-generated parts in Reaper and, I'm sorry, in Band in the Box and Real Band. Uh, because I know that I can, as long as I have what I'm looking for within my generated instrument tracks, I, I know that I can find it somewhere, manipulate it, edit it in, edit around, edit around it, and get it to where I want it. Now, would this have rendered eventually, generated the way I want it here, the way I just edited it? Maybe, maybe not, but I would have done a lot of round robins to try. This way, I just need a clean generated part and, um, uh, you know, and, and then having multiple parts of the same instrument offers me multiple takes, let's say, multiple choices to comp together what I want. And also, I wanted to make mention that this really isn't um, a problem with timing so much as it is what happened was is the auto-generated acoustic part here I was looking for a solid strum shot and it was giving me a loosely strummed shot and that's why the timing became a little off not so much that the timing was off it's just that the strum a loose strum was not what I was looking for and it was making a delay in the strum so that's how I tightened that part up also one thing I'll just make mention and we'll get into this a, he a whole heck of a lot more when it comes to mixing, but you've probably noticed this yellow line here in uh, in our, my my wave files, and that yellow line is my volume envelope line. And so when I place volume envelopes along this line, I can manipulate the volume any which way I choose. And these en envelope lines and uh, volume curves, effects curves, automation for effects, very, very handy, handy, makes quick work of mixing, which we will get into. But I just wanted to touch real quick on that in case you're wondering, what the heck is that yellow line through the wave files? I think that this is sounding pretty good. I'll touch on this real quick. This is about the time where I put in on the master uh, an ultimate, ultra maximizer. And I do this for a little insurance. What that does, and this is where people will tend to differ in opinions wildly as far as anything being applied to the master bus. I do like to, uh, early on, insert a uh, brick wall limiter. I happen to favor the a a Waves L1 Maximizer Plus. This protects the top end. I ha on my shots, I have extremely loud shots right now that I haven't uh, tweaked volume-wise. And so I'm just protecting the master when I play back now. Uh, that I don't clip. That's all. Now, without it... A whole bunch of clipping going on. With it. It saves it from clipping. Okay. That'll do it for this chapter. I'll see you in the next one. Hang in there. See you then. Bye. 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 Bye.